Hey everyone, welcome to our presentation for DataFest 2021. We are team Abrica D Data and com comprising Arnav, Ankur and myself. Since we are students in Canada, we decided to choose the Canadian data set and limit our analysis to students. It is no secret that university life is stressful and it isn't very difficult to get carried away and conform to substance abuse or alcoholism. According to the Addiction Center, substance abuse is, is known to trigger or intensify the feelings of loneliness, sadness, and hopelessness. Also, according to the CRC, suicide was found to be the second highest cause of deaths among youths aged 10 to 24. In our analysis, we focus on the relation between mental illness and substance abuse. We found that the most common forms of substance abuse came from marijuana and alcohol. We also noticed that 92% of students diagnosed with depression are alcohol or marijuana consumers and 84% of students that were diagnosed with a mental illness had consumed marijuana within the last week of completing the survey. Also, 85.4% of students wanted to seek university counseling to help reduce alcohol addiction. After unraveling these numbers, we wanted to do our part in helping university students cope with substance abuse. Over to Anaf. From our narrow interest of drugs and alcohol, we took a step further to understand if students who were in medical profession had any influence on potentially misusing drugs. And it was quite interesting to find out that 22% of them knew someone who had illegally prescribed drugs. So what it tells us was the uh, their uh, work workplace. And so we decided to look, then we decided to look at the percentage of students with mental health disorder uh, diagnosis group by cannabis usage and the results of the differences, as you can see in the dashboard, is quite significant. In particularly, if you if you look at the dashboard with the no uh, cannabis usage group, only 46% of the students had any sort of mental health disorders, while on the other hand, the other groups had over 70%. So these observations were considered when building our model. Furthermore, another interesting thing we found out was the, as, as you can also see from the dashboard, uh, was the difference in alcohol consumption and cannabis usage from students who had the intention of getting a prescription for misuse. It, interestingly, also found out that these students had higher mental, higher chance of mental health problems. And from, from the from this exploratory data analysis, we build a logistic regression model and we narrowed down on the selection of predictors based on the insights from the views on the dashboard. Hence, we decided to we decided, we decided to consider all this observation while building a model and we actually obtained uh, accuracy of almost 71%, uh, which was done by five-fold cross-validation. And this is a remarkable achievement uh, given the time constraint. I'll pass on to Ankur. Yeah, uh, so the idea was to create an effective flow from identifying students who would take this questionnaire to getting effective treatment to those who are diagnosed with uh, mental health disorders. So the uh, students would uh, fill in this questionnaire that we prepared, which is this, its speciality is that it only has 10 questions, which are mostly straightforward questions. So this questionnaire only takes about five minutes to fill, which is much less than many psychiatrist appointment nowadays. This is easy to access and faster, hence making it a very efficient process. So this the results from this questionnaire would be input into the logistic regression model, and the results that we would get would help to narrow down for diagnosis and it would give us useful insights into the condition of students' mental health. This data could be used, can be used by universities to promote awareness through workshops targeted for students who are prone to mental health disorders and facilitate positive feedback systems for them. The, some of the limitations of this uh, data are that uh, the mental health data we had was limited to disorders throughout the lifetime of the students. So we didn't have a way of exactly telling the timeline as to when so the initi initially occurred. And because of this, we couldn't really determine whether it was the drugs that the use of drugs that was causing mental health disorders or like mental health orders was promoting the use of drugs. Also, due to the lack of time, we couldn't extensively do an analysis on uh, accurate predictive variables. Our next steps include uh, spending more time on this uh, and getting 
um, uh, more analysis so that we can have more accurate predictive variables and also you know, including effective workflows by consulting specialists in mental health and stakeholders such as universities and students for questionnaire optimization. Thank you.